Guys, look what I found. This is literally XXX Tentacion in Cuba. There's so much footage about it. It was literally on the news. And I'm, I mean, I've heard rumors about this. He had nothing but positive mm -hmm. stuff to say. For real, for real. We had respect for each other at the end of the day. And that was, that's what was gonna kind of lead into a friendship. I was going to Miami to do several shows and I performed in Orlando and then I performed in Miami with X. Ever since I had met bro, we had just became like super, super cool friends. And now that's my best friend, I can say. That yeah. Legends record, it speaks because like you dropped it right after, you know, X. I made the same night he passed away. Hmm. Wow. What Talk was that, about that. Yeah, what was that relationship like? We weren't the best of friends. We had a, 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 a couple of, like deep conversations though. Questions have been rising around the possibilities of XXX Tentacion still being alive. So here's what you need to know. Photos began going viral online showing an individual on a new TV program looking a lot like XXX Tentacion. People began researching into this TV program. This turns out to be a documentary based on religious camps. This one in particular has zero internet access, no TV access, or any access to the public. This would make it a perfect spot for someone who's trying to distance themselves from the world. To understand this further, we first need to review XXX Tentacion's passing, as the trial for his passing was a complete mess, as Michael Boatwright, Dedrick Williams, Trayvon Newsom were sentenced to life inside a prison, and the fourth suspect, Robert Allen, would turn out to make a snitching deal with the feds, and he was sentenced to a few years. However, the real mess came when fans and even lawyers during the X trial believed and argued that Drake was the one responsible for X's passing. Before X, he said, if anything, it's Drake. And do you think that for one moment, here today, days after the event, two masked men, right? He came out on social media and said, guys, if anybody is Drake, do you think in that time, time span that they went and they addressed him, they talked to him? No. Do you think sitting here today, years later, any detective has ever asked, you know, Drake or, or anybody like that? No, they never did that. So you ask yourself, how could that be? And you say, hey, it's so-and-so. You better believe so-and-so is going to get investigated. But in this case, they didn't do it. They didn't do it because it didn't, it didn't comport with their version and their narrative. And as law enforcement, I think that they have the obligation to do so. The lawyer during trial is stating that Drake is the one responsible for it due to XXX Tentacion putting on his Instagram story eight months before passing, if anyone tries to get me, it was at Champagne Poppy, aka Drake. I'm snitching right now. So to understand this fully, we then need to deep dive into June 18th, 2018. This is the day that XXX Tentacion would sadly pass. His day starts by him hopping into his all custom black BMW i8, driving over to Riva Motorsports to begin purchasing a new motorcycle for fun. Riva Motorsports is a massive retailer for motorcycle, boats, and off roading vehicles. Once X arrives to the store and finds a motorcycle he likes, he would be told by a salesman they like to do cash deals and they give massive discounts. This then leaves to XXX Tentacion leaving the shop, calling his mother to update on the motorcycle he's gonna purchase, with his mother clearly telling him to swing by the house and pick up his uncle. That way someone can drive his I-8 back home. After picking up his uncle, the two would go on to the Bank of America to withdraw the cash for the new motorcycle purchase for later in the day. Security surveillance footage shows XXX Tentacion walking into the bank.
as XXX Tentacion is seen trying to withdraw 250,000 in cash. However, the bank teller declines the request, mentioning that she only can give out $50,000 without a cash order. X accepts the 50k limit, then orders the rest of the money for a later date. However, what XXX Tentacion didn't realize at this moment, the four suspects, Michael Boatwright, Dedrick Williams, Trayvon Newsom, and Robert Allen, were now beginning to scope out the all black BMW in the parking lot. Robert Allen, the snitch, mentions that they were already planning on committing a crime this day for money. XXX Tentacion's vehicle practically fell into their lap. Now, once realizing who the vehicle was as X returns to his vehicle and begins driving to Riva, the suspects would begin following him. This is when XXX Tentacion drives back over to Riva for the final time. Arriving at the retailer, the four suspects would park their vehicle across the street, trying to stay out of the way of any surveillance cameras. With X parking his vehicle in the parking lot and begin walking inside, two of the men hop out of the van and then start following X from inside of the store, keeping an eye on him, making sure he doesn't go anywhere, and trying to also see what is inside of his Louis Vuitton duffel bag. The other two men are sitting stakeout across the street, keeping an eye on his vehicle. The two men that followed XXX Tentacion into the store not only ended up making perfect eye contact with X, but they also started buying the ski masks and gloves that they were going to use for the crime. Most people were not aware of that. Now, XXX Tentacion continues on, looking at motorcycles with his uncle. However, he ends up not purchasing the one he was looking at anymore, as X then starts leaving the motorcycle shop wearing the Louis Vuitton pullover bag with all of the cash still inside. X then hops into his BMW, however he sits in park for roughly 5 minutes. Sitting in park was sadly the worst decision that he made, as this gave time for the two suspects that were inside of the store to run out to the minivan that was across the street, put the ski masks on, and begin the plan. As when it was time to leave, X turns on his vehicle. The suspects then turn their vehicle on as well. X then begins trying to exit at the one-way parking lot. However, the minivan pulls in front of his vehicle, preventing X from leaving. This is then when two men hop out of the vehicle, both going to one side of X's car, screaming at X through a small window, demanding him to roll his windows down and hand over the bag of cash and any jewelry. However, XXX Tentacion was refusing, making the men very angry, with even a little brawl starting happening through a small passenger window. At this current moment, X's uncle that is sitting in the passenger side, then opens up his butterfly door. He is then seen sprinting away, leaving X all by himself. With the passenger door now opened, one of the two suspects that were arguing with X outside of the vehicle would then sprint around to the passenger side, one now trying to get X's chains through the window, and the other one going through the passenger door, now on both sides of XXX Tentacion. Sadly, it would be moments after where we all know what happened. The two men were able to run off with X's Louis V bag full of cash and then hop back into their vehicle. In court, it would be revealed, and I quote, Prosecutors say Dedrick Williams was driving and cut off the car being driven by X. Michael Boatwright and Trayvon Newsom put the ski masks on and had firearms. The passenger manages to run away. They approach X, and Boatwright does the act towards X. The XXX Tentacion trial thankfully featured one snitch, and this would be Robert Allen. Allen revealed everything about the passing. We also learned exactly what happened to that 50000 that the suspect stole. Michael Boatwright, Dedrick Williams, and Trayvon Newsom all got $15,000 each. Robert Allen was only given five grand. Pretty interesting, the man that was paid the least amount of money is now the one snitching. However, he also brought a lot of insight of what truly went down, as he would later on reveal that XXX Tentacion's last words were, and I quote, what is this for? Making the passing feel even more upsetting, as XXX Tentacion didn't even understand what was truly happening. With surrounding witnesses at the scene all taking photos, publishing everything to social media, fans would begin quickly trying to figure out who did the crime. As several names would begin floating around in the air of possibilities, it seemed as if the most popular one would have been Drake. As the famous XXX Tentacion and Drake beef all started when X made a tweet stating, Drake's mom is kinda cute. Little did X know that this one single tweet would have caused one of the most popular rap beefs of all time. XXX Tentacion made that tweet when his music began just taking off. He released his song titled Look At Me and his life would be forever changed. 
However, several months after the song's release, X would then find himself behind bars for an incident between him and his ex-girlfriend Geneva, as it was this current time where Drake would take advantage of the increasing popularity of X's song. He would release his own song titled KMT. This song just happened to have the exact same flow, speed, and a similar beat to X's song. By the time XXXTentacion would be released from jail, he would speak on Drake stealing his flow. I was on the phone with my dog, Chris. He was like, yo, you gotta listen to this, this Drake. That's what, exactly what he said. Like, this Drake, you gotta listen to this. So he plays it. I hear, da 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 I was like, what the f As soon as it started, like I knew. I knew he was getting that. And the funny thing is, we didn't discover it. The fan, like you said, the fans, you could take his verse. Like they did a mashup. They put his verse on my song and they, the cadence is literally just at the same tempo. You, it, it's not offbeat at all. And you can, if you listen to my song and then you listen to the bruh song, like. It wouldn't take too long as to when Drake would then respond in his own interview. I'm seeing all this on my, on my IG hmm. under like some random picture of people being like, ah, you took this flow or whatever, right? I go and I find what song they're talking about, you know? And I, and, you know, and I, and I listen to it. I'm like, okay, I, I see where mm. people could draw like this mm. comparison off of like mm. the first two lines, whether it be the cadence or the rhyme pattern mm. or whatever. It's crazy that people think that after all this time, after all I've been through, that I'm the type of person to go and go and think that I'm going to like take that and make mm. it my own. Like I'm not. It seemed as if a majority of their beef would continue on behind closed doors as things would go very quiet between the two. However, one morning randomly X would post to his Instagram story, if anyone tries to get me, it was at Champagne Poppy, aka Drake. I'm snitching right now. As the weirdest part would be, after X would sadly pass, Drake would release a song with 21 Savage, where he would go on and rap the lyrics, maybe I should do a 20, maybe I should break that 20, do a 10, maybe I should break that 10, do a 5, if it goes live, do a 5 again. If he held his tongue on that live, he would be alive again. Now this could easily be directed at anyone. Fans then found a deeper meaning into the lyrics after he sadly passed as they needed to know who did this crime. As fans would learn, if you split a 20, you get two 10s. If you add two 5s together, you get another 10, leaving you with three 10s. Three 10s in Roman numerals is three Xs, which could obviously be the meaning of XXXTentacion, as he also mentions if he held his tongue on that live, he'd be alive again. As XXXTentacion has mentioned Drake's mother, multiple times on Instagram lives. With the news of X passing alongside Drake's name being posted everywhere for being responsible, many rappers would begin reacting, as Juice World would share that he had many conversations with X and he would share his experience with the rapper. He had a couple like deep conversations, talked on the phone a few times. He had nothing but positive mm -hmm. stuff to say. For real, for real. We had respect for each other at the end of the day. And that was... That's what was going to kind of lead into a friendship. He just said, make sure it's to keep all negative people out of your life. And just make sure that you have good energy around you, pretty much. As he'd also hop on a radio station interview where he shared this about the creation of his song titled Legends, who honors late rappers XXXTentacion and Lil Peep. And that yeah. Legends record, it speaks because, like, you dropped it right after, you know, X. I made the same night he passed away. Hmm. Wow. What was Talk it about that? Yeah, what was that relationship like? We weren't the best of friends. We had a, 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 a couple of, like deep conversations though. He had nothing but good advice to. To later even ski mask sharing their upbringing together. I'm at X in juvenile jail. Both was in juvenile jail, spending time. Then we just was like, yeah, we need an outlet to just stop getting in trouble. All we like to do is hit licks and like do hood friends. Long story short, so it's just like, all right, we need to find something to do. So he was like in there just beating on the tables because all you can really do is sit there and stare at each other. So we sitting there beating on um, the chairs and stuff and then we just like figured out each other could rap and then we just like helped each other. Like. As Ski would also share how they originally produced their unique distorted type of music, just like their collaboration song titled Take a Step Back. X recorded my first song. He ordered um, the stuff off of eBay. It was like a snowball mic. It was like the cheapest mic you could get. It sat on like three prongs or four prongs, one of those. And it was like just a basic um, audacity and like a laptop. So, but that's how we got distorted music. Just like X collaborated with Ski, he'd also go on and make a song with Trippy Red. As Trippy would state, the two became very close friends as well. 
I was going to Miami to do several shows, and I performed in Orlando, and then I performed in Miami with X. Ever since I had met bro, we had just became like super, super cool friends. And now that's my best friend, I can say. The two would go on to create one of the biggest songs of all time. This song would easily have over 1 billion collective views across social media platforms. As Trippy Red spoke on, on how he even got onto the song with X. I was in Lil Wayne's studio and I had recorded over this detail beat. It was of course. And then I had posted an Instagram snippet or the day after, matter of fact, and X had, he had texted me and he was like, bro, I need that. I sent it to him and he was like, bro, I'm putting this on my album. I'm like, all right, but. This would then later result in another friend of X being Denzel Curry, sharing the two were not only really good friends, but they actually lived together in South Florida. Denzel actually discussed the different stages of X's appearances, giving the meaning to all of the different styles that he had. There was different eras of X, like black hair era, like when he just had regular hair. When I met him, you know, he was just coming up, just doing his thing, just coming up, just making music, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I had the blonde and black era, when he had the half blonde, half black hair. And that's when, you know, when all the crazy stuff started happening with the allegations, with, you know what I'm saying, the trial, the shows. Then it went to the transition where white hair X, when he first got the tree in the middle of his forehead, that was like his evolving state. Then it went to Indigo X. He described it as Indigo X when we talked. The last time we talked, he said the reason why he changed his hair and he just felt like he understood how it was being a bad person and how easy it was. With Denzel's interview going viral, this would then lead into rap OG 50 Cent sharing this during an interview where he would share that X's music was timeless and that it wasn't right for some streaming platforms to begin blackballing him from the industry due to the legal cases he was going through. It's, it's sad because he's young, you know, kid. he's just really getting off into it. His career, really. In a lot of places, he had number one album, but they wouldn't cover it because of his, his legal issues. Yeah. You know, when he, and you see Spotify switch.